Hello everybody, we're back. So today we got a new problem, projectile problem for you. Uh, this problem is going to be shooting a projectile from the top of a cliff, 350 meters in height, with a velocity of 120 meters per second, and an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal. The question is, with what velocity will the projectile hit the ground with. Remember, velocity is a vector, therefore it has magnitude and direction. So we want to find the, the speed at which it hits the ground and the direction <coughs> at which it hits the ground. Now here's a hint before you begin this problem, and that is we don't actually need to find time. What we need to find is we need to find both the horizontal and the vertical velocity at this point at the ground. So go ahead and pause the video now and give it a shot. Okay, so the solution for this is first we have to analyze our horizontal. Well, we have to analyze both horizontal and vertical, but let's do horizontal first. Essentially, if I change colors here, uh, we've got our horizontal velocity here and our vertical velocity there. Now our horizontal is going to be VL cosine theta and our vertical is going to be VL sine theta. So let's come down here to horizontal and we'll say V horizontal is equal to VL cosine theta. And it's constant. Okay? It's constant. Because horizontally there's no gravity, so it's constant velocity. So therefore it's just 120 times cosine 25. Yay. We got it. <coughs> and our answer is 108 point eight meters per second. Great. So that's done. Now let's do the now let's do the vertical. Now for the vertical um, we're not going to be using time because if we do solve for time in this situation it's going to end up being a quadratic formula uh, because the delta D from the initial position to the final position is not zero. But we don't need that because we don't need time. All we need to do is figure out the final velocity. So let's go with this equation, the only kinematics equation that doesn't have time in it, which is this one. And let's solve for the final velocity. Now we know what the initial velocity is. It's VL sine theta. So we'll put that in. VL sine theta, but we have to square it, plus 2 times negative uh, 9.8 is our acceleration, times delta d, which is, uh, now be careful here because it's not 350. So if we start up here and we end at the bottom, that means we're losing altitude that means it's negative 350. Okay? So we've lost altitude, so negative 350 delta D, and our acceleration is also negative 9.8 here. So, uh, but hey, to get V final, we're going to have to square root all that. Okay? So we'll say it's the square root of, now VL is 120 sine 25 all squared plus uh, well the negatives cancel out right so I mean doesn't matter I can write it again just to be consistent but when I plug it into my calc <coughs> when I plug it into my calculator I'm not gonna I don't need to put negatives okay so our answer for that ends up being so our answer ends up being final velocity 97.1 meters per second. Now, at this point, um, 
But essentially, what we have found, if I change colors here again, we have found this velocity. That's our horizontal velocity. And we have found our vertical velocity. So this one is the horizontal, and this one is our vertical. Now all we got to do is use Pythagoras to figure out the resultant velocity or the velocity um, to the ground. So we'll say, we'll say this is Vg here. So we'll say uh, Vg equals the square root of, oh, actually let me move that down a bit so we can see that better. Vg squared equals Vh squared plus Vv squared, right? Because it's a right angle triangle. So Vg is equal to the square root of Vh squared plus Vv squared, which is equal to the square root of uh, 108.8 squared plus 97.1 squared. And that's going to give me, so that's giving me 145.8 meters per second. So that is the magnitude of the velocity with which it hits the ground. And also we're going to need the, uh, the, the direction so to do the direction, that's easy, right? It's just a triangle. There it is. We need this. So therefore, we can use, to get theta, we'll say theta is equal to inverse tangent of, remember, this is v horizontal and this is v vertical. Therefore, it's opposite over adjacent. So VV over VH. And that's going to give me inverse tangent of vertical was 97.1 divided by 108.8. And that gives me. 41.8 degrees. And that's that's uh that's below the horizontal. Okay? Uh below horizontal. So we've essentially we've solved this problem now. Uh, and notice we didn't calculate, we didn't have to use any type of uh, time calculations in this. So we just solved for our horizontal velocity and then we solved for our vertical velocity. And remember, we used this equation to solve for the vertical velocity, our final vertical velocity. And we knew that our delta D was a negative 350 which is how far it went down from its original position here. Now, I think we should now try and solve the time that it takes. So our next question, so we've kind of we kind of finished this question. Let's go ahead and put a box around this answer as well for theta. Okay? So we're done. Our, our answer for our final velocity is uh, these two guys here. Magnitude 145.8, direction 41.8 degrees. OK. But now I'd like to see if we can solve this question using, or not using, but solve for the time in the air. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is going to be a quadratic formula. And you're right. But there is another way to solve this. 
for so to solve the time in the air without using a quadratic if we turn this problem into two problems. So essentially what we need to do is let's take a look at this quadratic formula first and let's analyze it. Um, maybe I'll kind of just move it over like this a little bit and I'll draw a line here and I'll say okay here's our quadratic formula delta D equals one-half a t squared plus v i t. Now this is a quadratic formula I'll wait for that to disappear there we go this is a quadratic formula because we have a square term, we have uh, a non-square term, and we have a constant. But one of the ways which we can solve it without it being a quadratic is if delta d is 0. In other words, if the initial position is here and our final position is here at the same level, okay, then delta d becomes 0 and we can divide by t and we can find the time to this point. The problem with this approach is that then, in other words, if we cut the time into two parts, and if we were to use this point here as the what to the left of this is the first part and to the right is the second part, the second part from here down to the bottom also has a delta d of non-zero, which we, we know it would be negative 350, but also our initial velocity at this point would actually be our initial velocity here, but instead of going up, it would be going down. So it really doesn't help us. It still ends up being a, a quadratic problem to solve. So this is not the, the point that we should choose in order to cut it. Instead, a really good location to cut this is right here. That is, if we were to say that this first part is part one, and this part here is part two. The reason why this is nice is because at the top here, the vertical velocity is zero. That means for the second part, looking at this equation here, our initial velocity would be zero. Okay? And therefore, this term would disappear, and therefore we no longer have a quadratic. So essentially, what are the two questions we need to solve in order to do this? Because essentially, at this point, we're turning one question, which is the time to the ground, and we're saying to ourselves, let's find the time to the ground, but instead of using a quadratic, which we solved in previous lesson, uh, I think it was two lessons ago, instead of doing that, let's break it up into two problems, part one and part two. So here's the questions to part one I'd like you to solve. Part one. Starting here, ending up at the top here, find the time to max height. And also, and find the max height itself. So that's problem number one. I'll go ahead, pause the video now, and see if you can solve it. OK, so uh, we've got to figure out here the, the, the max height and the, ma and, the, and the time. So what we're going to do is we'll go to our kinematics, and we'll say, hey, listen, uh, in order to figure out the time to the top, First of all, let's try and figure out the distance to the top. So let's start out with this equation. Because we don't know we don't know the height at this point. 
But if we use this equation, we can figure it out. Because we can say, all right, well, let's solve for delta d. And we'll say uh, delta d is equal to, actually, no, we could figure out the time as well. Wait, 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 let, let me back up. Sorry, uh, let me back up. We can figure out the time too from this equation. I'm actually, we can do either one, either way. But what about this equation? V final equals AT plus VI. Now, if we know that the final velocity at this point is zero, then let's solve for T. So we'll take VI to the other side, and then we'll divide by A. And this will give us the time to the top. That's, I think that's easier, actually. So now that we have the time to the top, let's just put in our values. VI is here, VL sine theta, negative VL sine theta, divided by negative 9.8. And that's the time to the top. So what is it? T top is equal to negative 120 sine 25 over negative 9.8. And that's going to give us, gives us 5.17 seconds. So that's the time to the top. Okay, so we did that. Now let's find the distance to the top. Okay, how far do we need to go to get to the top? And now, now we can use the other equation that I was going to use, which I erased earlier. V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta D. Understand, I could rearrange this equation to go delta D equals V final squared minus V initial squared divided by 2A, or alternatively, I could use delta D equals 1 half AT squared plus VIT. Um, either one is going to work in this case because we know the time to the top and we know the acceleration and we know the initial value. But you know what? Hey, I think this one, I'd rather just use this one because actually final velocity at the top, at the top here, the final velocity is zero. So let's just go zero minus the initial velocity, which was VL sine theta squared divided by two times negative 9.8. And so we've got negative 120 sine 25 squared divided by two times, oops, that's supposed to be a 2, negative 9.8. And we end up with, OK, so we got uh, 131.2 meters. So therefore, we know, so if we draw this again, OK, here, I'll draw the whole thing again. Here's the cliff. There's the bottom. Projectile goes like this. It goes up and down. So what we're looking at here is, let's change colors here maybe. What we're looking at is this distance is, this delta D ended up being 131. Now, remember, the cliff is already 350 meters high. That didn't, that didn't account for anything in this issue. So this is 131.2. And to this top location, the time, the time to the top was 5.17 seconds. Perfect. OK. Let's keep all these, these two answers that we have in mind. Now let's give you guys the second part of the problem. So remember, this was part one. Part two is 
Let's start now at the top. Let me change colors again here. Let's start at the top. So now this is our initial position and this is our final position. Okay? But remember, V vertical at the top is still zero. Okay? Can you find the time from the top all the way to the bottom. So this time, maybe we should put it over here. This time was equal to 5.17 from here to here to the top, from where, you, from where it's launched to the top. Now we're looking for the time from the top all the way to the bottom. Okay? See if you can figure that time out next. Pause the video now. I'll, I'll just, actually, we should write down what we're looking for. Find time to bottom. Oops. From the top. So we're looking for this time here. Pause it now. Okay, let's let's uh, solve this problem now. Uh, one thing I think I should have done, which I'm, which I think it would have been more clear, is I should have denoted the time instead of denoting the time on the diagram as a vertical bracket. I should have denoted the time horizontally as 5.17 seconds. There, so I don't like this or this. And the reason why is because I've denoted the time from this point to this point as what we're looking for now. So, and that's a horizontal bracket. And so this bracket should be horizontal too. And the reason why is because now it's clear that if we find this time, we can add it to the 5.17 to get the total time in the air. So, how do we do this? Well, let's use this equation, 1 half AT squared plus VIT. Because uh, this equation involves acceleration, and this is an acceleration, this, this is a vertical analysis here, okay? So this is, this is vertical. None of this is horizontal at this point. And um, what's really nice about this, and the reason why it's not a quadratic, you might be saying, ah, oh, but, but delta D is not zero. You're right, it's not zero. It's from all the way to, from the top here all the way to the bottom. That's not zero. But what is zero is the velocity at the top. That means this term right here is zero. That means this term disappears and we no longer have a quadratic equation. Now if I solve for t, I can say, okay, well let's multiply both sides by 2 and divide by a. So I get 2 delta d divided by a equals t squared. And now I can just take the square root of both sides and I've got my t. So 2 delta d divided by a square root equals the time. And that's this time. No problem. There's just one little thing we have to be careful about. And that is, what's delta d? From the top here all the way to the bottom. Well, it's more than 350. It's actually 350 plus 131.2. So we needed this answer in order to be able to complete this. So if we go delta, so let's draw a line here, and we say this delta D that we're calculating is 350 plus 131.2, okay? So we'll do that on our calculator. That's equal to 481.2 meters. But be careful because it starts at the top and ends at the bottom. That means 
that the delta D is actually negative 481.2. So if we solve this now, we go 2 times negative 481. It's a negative because it's a loss in altitude. And also, that works perfectly because our acceleration is negative 9.8, so the negatives cancel. And if we work that out, we'll get 9.91 seconds. Now that we know the time here is equal to 9.91 seconds, we can now add this time and this time and we have our solution. So our total time in the air is equal to the time to rise plus the time to fall, which is 5.17 plus 9.91 for a total time of 15.08 seconds. So that is our total time in the air. Now, hey, you know what? Um, if you go back to our quadratic and solve that, it was, let's go find that equation and write it down. So there's our old equation that I copied from a uh, lesson from a few days ago. If you solve this, you will in fact get 15.08 seconds as well, where theta equals 25, VL equals 120, and H equals 350. So. Uh, either way, we found a different way to solve it without using a quadratic, and um, I think that's kind of cool. Hope you enjoyed this lesson.